Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. The official Instagram page of American Riviera has already reached over half a million followers, which is pretty impressive. And as I'm editing this, it's at 551k. I've seen some people comparing the figures to different ventures from other members of the British royal family, like Charles, Camilla, Kate's Endeavor, and Williams as well. I've even seen some people comparing it to other celebrities and public figures, such as the former president, Barack Obama, Beyonce, Jennifer Aniston, Blake Lively, and her husband, Ryan Reynolds. So all in all, with no promo and still not an idea of what exactly is going to be sold, that's pretty impressive. Prince Harry will be attending the Uplift by Better Up from April 10th to 11th in San Francisco. Can't wait to see that. The official website of the British royal family has undergone some recent updates. The profiles of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have now been combined, and it also links to Harry and Meghan's official news site, Sussex.com. Now, you know, the usual suspects saw this as an opportunity to create some sort of narrative that they've been demoted or downgraded, but as per usual, it's just tittle-tattle. Hello did an article in which it sees the inclusion of the Sussex.com website as King Charles' support for Harry and Meghan's new royal website. Cakegate continues to be the gift that keeps on giving, and of course, they're trying to insert Harry and Meghan into the mix. Uh, in the last video, we talked about them using Harry and Meghan's photograph from Misan Harriman as some sort of gotcha moment. That was quickly disputed. Now they're attempting to use the christening photo for Prince Archie, and that has been dismissed laughably predictable as per usual, but it really hasn't been distracting people in the way previous Harry and Meghan related stories have been used to distract from, well, bad PR for Kensington Palace. So. Why did the Daily Mail have to print this? Because of this. This is a picture of baby uh, Archie. Yeah, baby Archie's christening from 2019. This was the official picture that went out to everybody. Now, unless you live under a rock, you know that the Raws have come under a lot of pressure recently for photoshopping pictures. This being the most famous one. We're still trying to get to the bottom of that. But also there's this one. And this one here. Now obviously it's the British media. If they're going to be going at the royal family, they have to take a side swipe at a certain somebody. So then claims started going around that there was some kind of editor's note put on this picture saying that it was fake or digitally altered or had somehow been enhanced. And who was leading the charge with that? The Daily Express. This story went up at 7.07 .07 this morning. At 12.19, they issued this. Now, this is a story saying that the person that snapped the picture denies that it was edited. And also, Gay News has verified that when, uh, before there was an editor's note. What they seem to be very quiet about is they had to print this. And while it's kind of wishy-washy and blah, 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 and focusing very much on the fact that the photographer insists that it's real. This is basically a retraction for them printing a bullshit story. I don't get it. Why you gotta go hunting? Why are these two always gotta be brought into your madness? And they say there's no agenda. It's been really interesting seeing a lot of people on social media calling out the double standards and the blatant attempts of the British tabloids to use Harry and Meghan to distract from William and Kate's mess. Now in the case of the other photoshopped images from Kensington Palace, I feel like a lot of royal watchers who are not necessarily royalist have peeped a lot of these photoshops as they were released, but now you're having places like Getty and CNN and well, just about every reputable uh, institution that deals with the media paying close attention to past things released from Kensington Palace. And one of the photos that's been under the microscope is the one of Queen Elizabeth with her great grandchildren. And ordinarily, I wouldn't really care about it, but that photo in particular has always sort of rubbed me the wrong way because of the talking points that surrounded it. Now this photo shows all of the great grandchildren with Queen Elizabeth, with the exception 
of Princess Lilibet and Prince Archie. And it came from Kate. So again, this is another Photoshop from Kate from Kensington Palace. And this was spun as them snubbing Archie and Lily, right? This photo was meant to be a gotcha. Look, Harry and Meghan are excluded. And so are Archie and Lilibet. And one of the things that has bothered me the most when it comes to the, well, I don't want to say Mexit because I hate that word, from Harry and Meghan leaving the firm and starting anew in California has been the way their children have been treated. We've had occasions of just micro sort of bigoted views. We've had very alarmingly blatant R word views. And we've seen the way that they have been othered in the press and the silence that comes from the palace. And to be quite frank, a lot of the messiness seems to me to come from Kensington Palace, AKA William and Kate. So this photo in particular, the way that they sort of use that as a gotcha, as another way to stick it to Harry and Meghan by proudly saying, well, look, we're, we're snubbing your kids, but look at you now. That karma, that pendulum is swinging the other way. What was once a snub to Harry and Meghan is just another example of the duplicitous nature of what comes out of Kensington Palace. Now the trustworthiness of the palace is in tatters globally and try as hard as they might. The UK press has not been able to fix this for William and Kate. They're furiously trying, but so far hasn't been successful. The most damning piece of evidence in all of this Kate Middleton stuff and all of the, where is she? Did she have the abdominal surgery? What surgery is she missing? Did she have a facelift? All of these things. And I, this new one of Peggy Rose, sorry, I call her Peggy, it's funny. The most damning piece of this though, is that none of those stories have been run by the Royal press, have been run by the tabloids in the UK, which just tells me that Harry and Meghan were absolutely telling the truth when they said that they were being fed all of the reports that all of their stories, all of their stuff was being manufactured and leaked by the royal press because where are William and Kate in all of these stories? But they had no problem throwing Harry and Meghan straight under the bus and leaking all of these stories, leaking all of this bullshit about Meghan, telling all these lies. And yet there is not one piece of information coming from them about any of the William and Kate stuff, not one. That is the most damning evidence to me. In the midst of Kate Gate, we've been seeing the UK press attempting to use Harry and Meghan in one of two ways. They'll either say, well, you know, don't look at, at Photoshop Gate over here and all the bad press that Kensington Palace is currently getting. Harry and Meghan, you know, they Photoshop photos too. Look over there. Harry and Meghan, bad. They're bad. <laughs> or they'll say, well, you know, Meghan talks about being a feminist and she should be supporting her sister-in-law, her poor, poor sister-in-law. You know, the one who has not assisted Megan at all throughout years of abuse, but whatever. Or they'll say, Harry should come back and be there for his brother. His family needs him. He's deserted his country. But I am loving seeing so many people on social media saying, mm, no, not so fast bring back harry in 2024 now mm, no i don't really like that idea if the monarchy is to fail or succeed it will be due to charles and his heirs charles camilla william and kate those are the only people who are responsible for the failure and or success of the monarchy harry he's gone that i'm going uh with my wife to Montecito and we're going to protect our peace and we're going to have security. So I, I don't understand why those that abused him and his family so much would want him to come back and save the day. I, it is a thankless job. I'm not coming back to save anybody who just held my feet to the fire. Absolutely not. That is their sort of Damocles. It will hang over their head. And if it is to fall, it will be because of their actions. And ever since Harry and Meghan left and they have talked about their experiences within the institution and why it was very important for them to leave 
why they felt compelled to leave. And you'll often hear a lot of royalists saying that Harry has betrayed his family. This familial unit within the house of Windsor is stronger than ever. And Harry, Harry is the problem. No, Megan, Megan is the problem. The interloper who has brainwashed Harry and has taken him away from his country and his family. They're trying to feed this fairy tale that all is well within the house of Windsor. But it's always interesting because ever so often, you'll hear them say the quiet part out loud. But also the two different teams. I mean, it's clear that, I mean, it's clear they're not working well together, but also, you know, they have very little respect for each other. So we're beginning to get to a situation where we all thought that all those, you know, two teams fighting against each other was gonna be a thing of the past. And I don't think they're fighting because I think William and Charles are close, but those two teams, you know, Buckingham Palace have been quite enjoying the complete mess that Kensington Palace have been making of things. And certainly I've, you know, heard them saying, you know, oh, well, you know, they need to get, you know, they need to sort this out. It's not, you know, they haven't been defending them. Right. They've been kind of slightly thinking, well, you know, ha ha, we wouldn't have made a mess of it. Well, like, look, this Do you know something? Do you know something? <laughs> I might know something. I might know something too. What's the thing you know? Oh no, I can't tell you and you tell me what you know. Well, I can't tell you what I know. Well, then I can't tell you what I know. Okay, fine. I truly feel like the collusion between the British royal family and members of the UK tabloids who have collectively engaged in this years-long campaign of mocking and dehumanization of Harry and Meghan has in some ways opened the floodgates where it was just a matter of time until other people within that family gets to experience a taste of it as well. Because no matter how respectable of an institution that you uphold, when you open those floodgates, when you set the precedent, this is what follows. The very same jokes and mocking that you encouraged, turn a blind eye to, or chuckling at, it's only a matter of time until that extends further, like a crack in a glass, it's gonna widen. So now you see the global thrashing. This week alone, I've seen jokes cracked by huge institutions and businesses <laughs> and cities on social media. There was a post from Prague Airport, the official Twitter account for the Prague Airport. There was also one from the Dublin Airport. Yep, and that was the official Twitter of the Dublin Airport as well. We saw tweets from New York Sanitation Department. And not only that, it was followed up with a tweet from the official City of New York Twitter page. Merriam-Webster Dictionary even joined the chat. And William was not immune. And you know that you've sort of opened the floodgates a little too widely when a reporter from the BBC adds fuel to the conspiracy theory fire. You've even had two instances that I've seen so far of people in the mainstream media talking about just how all of this has affected the respectability of the institution and those within it on a global scale. It's febrile and it's out of control, you know, because cons it's conspiracy theories galore. Uh, actually, a great sort of a final, I think, transition of the royals to being uh, the royalty from being a kind of respected institution to being simply a kind of wild, you know, Kardashian episode. Um, I definitely think there is a sort of loss of stature that's accrued to all of this because it all feels silly and scandalous, and there's a, a real feeling that you know the palace is no longer a kind of institution of great. Renown. Yes, and let's be frank, the last month or so has been a comms disaster. Absolute comms disaster, and I, I do think it's more cock-up than it is conspiracy. Harry and Meghan are in the upswing, because what I'm hearing is people saying, well, Meghan was right. It's it, impossible being a member of that family. And people who think that Kate might have had some kind of a nervous breakdown, they're looking at what happened to Meghan, they're looking at what happened to Diana. And they're saying, yep, it's impossible to live in that family 
uh, Megan and Harry may be right. Um, how damaging is all this being, do you think, to the brand of the royal family and the monarchy? I'll, I'll tell you why I think this is really damaging. That a, a lot of people in America, honestly, myself included, think that the that the royal family it's just this stodgy group of people behind uh you know this big wall now amongst the conversations surrounding the double standards and hypocrisy of the treatment of Meghan and Kate the protection that the palace has afforded Kate and refused to give to Meghan conversations about the way the UK press has essentially rallied around Kate and condemning any sort of questioning or speculation as bullying while engaging in a years long bullying of Meghan Markle. But this week I've also seen a lot of conversations about what could have been between Meghan and Kate. Friendship, camaraderie, sisterhood. What Kate Middleton is going through right now, it is the result of women not sticking with other women. Anytime a woman has to make a decision that requires her to betray or to abandon another woman, a woman who's going through turmoil and you sit and you watch it, that karma is going to come back and get you in some form or fashion. And what happens when that karma comes back, you find yourself alone because you betrayed not only that other woman, you've also betrayed yourself. You've betrayed all of the potential trusting relationships around you I hope that she's safe and healthy and whole at the same time I don't care about her public embarrassment I really don't because like I said it is a perfect example of when women do not stick with other women Kate Middleton could really use Meghan Markle right now for more than one reason they're going through very wild situations in a very unique situation that only the two of them in the whole entire world could probably even relate to. But because of that abandonment and betrayal that she performed publicly in front of the world against another woman, you know, people kind of just don't give a rat's butt. What happens to her? People are going to be looking at her with the side eye. Regardless of what Kate is going through right now, she really could use Meghan Markle right now. It's that it's wild to me. We're going to watch this unfold. I'm pretty confident she wished she had got on that plane with Meghan Markle and Harry and went over to California right about now so that she could live her best life. Take note, don't abandon the other women in your life that you are later going to need. With everything going on, I just want to say I have zero sympathy and empathy for Kate Missington and everything going on with her because she was the one who made Meghan Markle cry and tried everything in her power to get her out of the royal family and aided and abetted in all of that abuse that came her way and was silent and was not helpful to her at all. So all of this going on with Kate Missington is absolute karma or what you know whatever is coming back to haunt her. She's been missing for the past three months. She hasn't been seen since Sandra and all those police cars end of December. All the photo editing blunder. Her husband barely visiting her in the hospital and not doing anything about it. But... Who wins at the end of the day? At the end of the day, when the sun goes down and the moon comes up, who wins? The rat, Camilla. She wins. She's the one who comes out on top. She's the savior for her husband, King Charles. But I don't give a damn about Kate Missington because she didn't care about Meghan Markle. You're not Diana. You don't have that empathy and love because you're just, you are rude to Meghan. So it is what it is. I just really don't care. Okay, so if you follow my page, then you know that I talk about the royals pretty frequently. And, like, at least, like, 20 to 30% of those videos are me just, like, dunking on Kate. Because, I'm sorry, I do not like Kate, okay? Like, I liked her in the beginning, but, like, the more that I've gotten to know her, the more I've learned about the royal family, the more that I don't like her. And I especially don't like her after all the shit with Meghan, okay? And the real reason I don't like her is because she's not a girl's girl. Like, Kate Middleton is the girl in high school who would be, you know, so pretty, teacher's pet, everybody would love her, but she would be so mean to you. And, like, I think we've seen that throughout her whole life. She had spent her whole life waiting to marry Prince William, who treats her like, like, which is crazy, I can't even imagine what he's like at home, and all because she wants to be queen. And so it's like, I'm sorry. Like, I I don't feel sorry for, for people like that. Like, I, I just, I don't. You waited all this time to marry a king. My question is with that, I'm like, so we're not allowed to say that Kate Middleton got a BBL, but y'all are okay to say like literally the most on earth about Meghan Markle? 
please miss me with that i literally can't and like the thing is when it comes to like will and kate's marriage like just get divorced you don't like him he certainly does not like you he is cheating on you everybody knows it like just get divorced like people get divorced every single day co-parent but the reason kate won't do that is because she wants to be queen more than she wants to be happy and i'm sorry but i just can't muster the energy to feel sorry for people who like have every avenue to fix their life and choose not to because they want status more than they want to be happy so wherever kate is recovering from her bbl like i hope she's happy i don't feel sorry for you i really wanted to stay out of this royal drama but here's what i think is going on um, her energy just feels like it's away from being a royal, like she has stepped away from her duty. She has left and her energy is no longer in the presence of the royals. She's not concerned with her royal duty. She's kind of left it up to them. With that being said, I think that they have had issues for a very, very long time. Her, Harry and William. But I think she's never really known William without Harry and as long as Harry was there the situation between her and William was tolerable Harry was her buffer and her friend and then Megan came along and took the only buffer that she had between her relationship with William and kind of threw a monkey wrench into everything so she has to kind of um tolerate William all on her own now and I think it's been a, a bit much for her. And I think she feels like the one friend that she had within the royal family is now gone. I think Kate has had a very, very hard time dealing with the fact that Harry is not there with her anymore. I also think that there's a possibility that Willie was just doing what his grandmother wanted and marrying Kate and having those children and that the moment she died or was unable to fulfill her duties that he was eventually going to go rogue because there were going to be a new set of rules to live by and lastly I do think Kate is aware of all of the conspiracies online and I do think that she giggles at a few of them I'm not a royal watcher or a true crime fanatic I came into this story as a photographer, much like Princess Catherine of Wales, who I did not believe took an edit of this photo. But here's the thing, in the cavalcade of lies from the palace? And imagine her not with her made up title, but what she was really meant to be, which is the meanest girl at a Midwest high school. This is how I know that the royal family is completely up when it comes to Kate Middleton. My group chat, of seven black women, okay, blackity black, black women is blowing up with the Kate Middleton conspiracy theories, okay? Blowing up. I have never spoken about that woman, okay? I've never cared about Kate Middleton. I've spoken about Meghan Markle. I've spoken about um, the Queen. I've spoken about Harry. But Kate Middleton, for me, a non factor. I don't, <laughs> I don't spend any time thinking about that white woman. But right now, I'm invested and so are all of my black girlfriends. What that tells me, if we're invested, every corner of the earth is invested, okay? That tells me you guys have managed to screw this up so royally that people who don't care at all about this woman now care. We are looking, we're looking close, okay? The way I studied that TMZ video, and I can tell you right now, that is not Kate. If that is Kate, homegirl had a full face transplant because <laughs> absolutely not so anyway the point is i don't know where that woman is i don't know what she's doing i hope she's healthy i hope she's well but the royals have completely bungled this whatever the outcome is they have completely bungled this <laughs> my flabber is gasted besties um who is this person that is not kate this tweet is where I got that photo from. I zoomed in. That is not Kate. Guys, I'm so sorry. This is just not Kate Middleton. It is simply not Kate Middleton. And you're not decided. The royal family is boring me again because they've waited like a million years to tell me this announcement that's happening. The royal announcement, the royal announcement. What is it? Like, did she gone girl herself or not? Like the royal family, like th they're not interesting enough to keep me in suspense. And also how come I can see King Charles getting a whole colonoscopy, but I have to, I've been seeing blurry photos of Kate Middleton for months. Like I usually, I, I could see pores usually when it comes to the royals. Like a quick video message would really end this thing. Why'd I have to go off 
off of like fake royal expert sources and like where the flag is and like, uh, I, I'm just bored. I'm not a conspiracy theorist about all of this royal stuff. I'm not gonna point out like, oh, the cheekbones aren't the same, it's the impersonator. The only thing I'm gonna say is that Kate popping into the grocery store with William, it doesn't work with the storyline. Like she's in, she's recovering from something. This is the story, right? She's recovering from something. She can't even come to Easter now. They've pushed the timeline of Kate being out and about to like June before people will see her. And now she's just at the grocery store. It doesn't work. It just simply doesn't work. Like why would she not be at any of the Royal events if she can fully walk and chat and smile and talk and hang out with William? Why wouldn't there even be a photo or a Zoom video like they do all the time. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't work. You think Kate Middleton's okay? No, I think I she's. Really oh, well, as in, is she all right? <laughs> Talk about letting your intrusive thoughts win. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.